Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how to set up our new live chat widgets. These are live in your back end. There is a second phase to this. We'll have all the AI automation, AI bots uh, along with it, but this the live chat widget is, is available now. You can get it under controls, templates, chat widgets. Once you come to this section, you can come over here and create chat widget. Now, a few things about the chat widget there, you'll see here this initial data forms. If you're not familiar with data forms, if you're just new to the system, make sure you watch the video on data forms, how to set those up. They're under support, under courses, or on my YouTube channel. But on the initial data form, so each chat widget has two proactive forms that are presented to your visitors. When your visitor first comes to your chat widget and it's, it's available, it's on, when they first send the message, they're presented with a form to provide their contact information. Even though the form has required fields, they can continue to chat with you without supplying that information. Uh, so I recommend when you set up an initial data form for your chat widgets, have very limited amount of contact information you're going to collect. I recommend only doing email address. That way you can get as much, um, I guess, conversion rate that you possibly can from your chats of actually supplying you with contact info. There's another data form that does proactive outreach, and that's our closed data form. The closed data form is when your chat widget is closed, whether it be your availability time slots or you just turned it off. That form will always be presented for them to fill out. Now they can't send messages. They can only fill out that form uh, with your chat widget. So I'm gonna jump over here to data forms real quick and show you um, what I've set up. So you can set up, call it whatever you want. I just called it initial chat. So create new data form. By the way, data forms are under templates excuse me, templates, controls, data, data forms. So name it whatever you want. If you're not, if you're using workspaces, assign it to a workspace. I'm not using workspaces in this example. If you're not familiar with workspaces, watch that video. Again, I'm not using workspaces for these examples. So inside initial chat, I just set up an email address field. So I clicked on add data field. I named it email address. I choose, so just email, I choose Oops, I'm deleting things over here. And I choose a preset email address. Now you can choose text input instead of the actual preset email address. There is some upside to using that preset because there is some extra checks that happen, uh, but totally up to you. And the way the chat is widget is designed, which I'll show you here in just a bit, we've limited the size of the fields that are presented into the, you know, the widget itself. So we don't have a label for any of your fields. So you're gonna to wanna to put a default text here. Um, that's the placeholder text that's gonna show up. Important that you do that or just be a blank field presented to the visitor. And then click on required and uh, set to email and hit create for the map to. And that's it, like I said, I recommend just do an email address for your initial chat form. And then on the closed form, that's where you can you know, collect a lot more information but again, you can put whatever you want. You don't have to listen to me. You can have a long form there. You can have a survey if you want, you know, before they can send you a message. Um, and I take that back. They cannot fill out your form and still send you messages, by the way. It's just trying to collect their information um, message there for them to, you know, leave their, their info for you to contact. So the closed chat, though, they can't send messages. They can only submit to the form. And this one I did first name, last name, email address, phone, message. Again, you can put whatever you want there. And those are my two forms I set up, initial chat, closed chat. So now over here on the chat widget side, I would go ahead and select that initial chat form, name it, sign it to a workspace if I'm using a workspace, and hit create. So once you go into the chat widget, so after you create it, it'll take you right into it. Here are all your settings. So right out of the gate, you can click right here on the little preview. Now this preview um, that's set up here, you can change the theme color to whatever you like. Right, so you just change the color there, that'll reset, it'll brand it, whatever color scheme you have here. The profile image, this is the available agents that are added to this chat widget, pulls their profile picture. So you're gonna to wanna to update your profile picture if that's not what you want showing. And then of course the color scheme here, you have the option of changing uh, within the form itself. Uh, over here on the right hand side, so this is your embed code. One thing to note, if you are on a white label domain and it's not app.ligna.io and you're not logging into that white label domain, you're still logging into app.ligna.io, you're still gonna see our domain. So you're gonna wanna be logged into your domain 
before you copy this embed code. This is, you know, chat widgets, completely private labeled and white labeled with the system. Doesn't show Ligna at all. So make sure you're logged into your URL to get your URL here on the, on the embed code. Again, Workspaces just talked about that name. So these are your available agents. So these are agents that you can add to the chat widget. Now, if they're not added to the chat widget, obviously none of the live chats that show up in the conversations tab are gonna be presented to those agents. Uh, so if you want somebody to have, can, you know, collaborate with live chats or be able to support live chat widget, you can add as many agents as you like uh, to the individual chat widget. Time zone, this is default from your profile, but you can override it for some other time zone if you like. And then by default, the always on for your availability is checked off when you create your chat widget. Now you can select, just like our meeting pages, different days and different times that you wanna set up that are available from whatever time uh, you know, to open and close, you can do that. Or you can just always have it on, however you like. Now with the AI chat bot module that's coming out here shortly, you'll have an option to have the first message always replied based on AI, right? And then you can take over that chat within the conversations tab which again, that video will follow here on how to do that once that's available. This is all for live chat. Uh, here's your prompts. So initial chat, there is a default prompt there. So if you don't like the default prompt, uh, which we'll see in just a second, you can put your own prompt, you know, as far as what the initial chat message is uh, to collect their email address, whatever form that you have. And then you also have the closed chat uh, prompt here. So closed chat message, whatever you wanna put in there. Over here on the knowledge base pages. So to set up a knowledge base page, basically what that looks like is if you click on help, it'll bring in your articles that you have set up in the knowledge base center. And so these are all the articles that you would have available. So you would just click on add KB page, select the KB page that's available. I've only set one up and to set up a KB page for the chat widget, you would just come over here to system. You would click on knowledge base and you would click on create topic. So this would be your top level topic. So interesting about our knowledge base center, there is a topic to topic then page kind of hierarchy. And what I mean by that is if you go over to our knowledge base center, you'll see that there's a top level category like for CMS and then inside CMS, there's a funnels category, blog category and themes category and an article here. Now for, if you're building out a knowledge base center, you know, obviously watch that training on that part of the platform, but it's basically just setting up a, a topic and then a subtopic and then a page for you to show up on the knowledge base. However, for the chat widget, it doesn't matter. You just create a knowledge base page if you like. Uh, it doesn't have to be on topic, topic to show up there. Uh, that's only for the hierarchy that we have within our knowledge base center back here. So under system, I don't know that's probably confusing, but bottom line is, if you want a knowledge base page to show up in the knowledge base center and also available on your chat widget, you would want to create a topic. So in this case, I did chat. And then inside that topic, instead of creating a page inside that main topic, I created a subtopic called live chat. And so now I have a subtopic. And then I went into the subtopic. And then that's where I created my actual page. Right, and so now I've created how to use live chat, step-by-step -step guide, and whatever you put in here, obviously is gonna show up on that page. And so over here in the chat widget, you're just, once you do that, um, hit refresh, if you're coming back to it, and select the new page that shows up that you've created. And now you can add as many knowledge-based pages as you like. Now what's cool about the AI chat module that's coming out, it's not only gonna be trained on scraping from your website, but also documents you add, but also your knowledge base pages that you set up. And then of course, it's gonna to continue to train your model per chat widget based on all the chat conversations, a live chat um, every single day. So super excited about that part. Uh, so that's how you add a, a knowledge base page and what that means. And then of course, if you know CSS, you can manipulate the whole design of your chat widget. So let me go ahead and add this chat widget to a internal Ligna site. If you're adding this to an external site, you would just put this in the, you know, above the close of the body is the best place to add this chat widget uh, for your external websites. 
for Ligna based sites, you're going to want to come into the site and then click on embed. So these are site settings. Um, once you get into the site settings, whatever site you want to add it to on our platform, click on settings and then come in here to embed and then drop that at the end of the body. And so that's going to add our chat widget. And this is the sample site that I've put together for it. Okay, I'm going to hit refresh and you should see the chat widget show up on the right hand side here. So in the conversations tab as a logged in agent, let me go on to my other browser over here, which you can't see. I'm going to show you what it looks like when an agent, when someone starts typing. So anybody that comes in and clicks on the little icon and then clicks on send message. So that would be here, right? So when they click here, click on send message, start filling that out. Yeah, I just want to make sure we got all that set up. Cool. So this is what it looks like. And you're not seeing me type over here. I'm just typing over here. So that'll pop up and you'll start seeing the new chat session of somebody typing. In addition to that, let me come back to my message over here and let me send in a message. So this is the initial data form. So you're going to see that. You're also going to see that it updated. Oops, where am I at? Conversations tab. So there's the new message. You'll see everything's undefined, but what is cool, it does pick up what pages you're looking at, the time that you're on, the city that you're at. And then I am going to fill this out. Checking chat to my.io and then hit send. So that's creating a lead in our CRM. You know, if you have any workflows or anything that are set up with that, that'll also come through um, within here. So let me go into the conversations tab. So you can have, like I said, um, the initial data form, you can have more fields in that. However, that's, you know, the initial form that I would recommend just having an email uh, address within there and in the conversations tab. So you have that tied, you have the lead, you can go into that lead. Um, any responses you do would go directly, obviously to the chat. And so that shows up with a message there. You can do attachments, multiple attachments uh, on both sides. And yeah, so this is a you know, live chat, not only for you, but any of agents that are on the system, if they're an added chat or an agent to that chat widget, they will see that new response come in as well. And they'll come in here and be able to add in, you know, take over the chat and be assigned to them as well, right? So you multiple agents can work off the same chats, right? Which is pretty cool. Uh, and you got, again, like I said, you can have as many agents as you like uh, within that. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's pretty, you know, straightforward as far as how the live chat works. You can, again, there's gonna be a lot more settings when it comes to the AI training component to it and being able to take over an actual chat that's going on. But yeah, it's real simple. Again, go over to chat widgets. Really the only thing you have to worry about is the initial chat form and the closed chat form. Uh, that way it has a proactive uh, look whenever you have, you know, someone fills out the form and goes directly in there and, and everything like that. So let me know what you think. I'm looking forward to rolling out the AI component to it and really showing you how that works. Um, let me know what you think. And of course, uh, subscribe to get that latest video when it comes out. Appreciate you.